Before we get into today's episode, I need your guys' help. Out of everyone who regularly listens to us or watches our channel on YouTube, only 10%, actually it's 9.6, so it's less than 10% are actually subscribed to the channel. So even if you are listening to this podcast, since I know a majority of our listeners are on podcast platforms, if you could go over to YouTube and just go ahead and hit subscribe, that would be fantastic. You can, of course, watch the podcast over on YouTube, but also you can see a multitude of different videos covering topics that we may or may not have already covered on this podcast. And please comment and ask more questions. If you look at our comments, you'll see basically every single comment is answered. Alex and I love getting back to you and just being able to freaking have a conversation. And that's been a big priority of both of ours in this year is being more consistent, if that's the word we want to use, when it comes to DMs and comments and just being able to get back to people. So ask away. Actually, a majority of our topic ideas are either from check-ins or from questions that you guys ask. And we want to keep providing for things that you actually care about. And that's another reason that subscribing helps us because not only does it tell YouTube to show it to more people so that it can get more reach as a free resource, but it also helps in letting us know that you like the content. So if that's the way we gauge feedback, how many thumbs up, how many comments, how many uh, likes, how many views, all of those things are how we decide what stuff you guys like. So that is really helpful to have that feedback. But let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. And it is a solo episode with just me. So we'll we'll see how how we fare here. But I recently posted a reel saying, POV, you stuck with it. And I highlighted some pictures and videos from my fitness journey. And I actually had a comment on that video, and it was from Maddie G Eats, asking, what would you say was the biggest shift, mindset or actual behavior change? And that led me to this exact idea of doing this podcast and kind of going through those photos and talking through what the experience experience was throughout my journey. This isn't going to be a specific my fitness journey type of podcast, although we do have one of those and I'll leave mine and Alex's uh, in the show notes for you guys to listen to if you are interested on more of the ins and outs and the details. But this is going to be talking specifically when it comes to that mindset shift and that behavior change. And since it has been seven years since some of those pictures, just being able to take it back to where it all started. It's so easy easy to look at what someone else is doing and think I'm not there yet or why can't I look like them or why am I not having those results and I know I've said it a multitude of times but oftentimes the thing between you and the results that you want to see is time. It's not that you need to be doing a million different things or you just haven't implemented the magic thing yet. It could be, but most likely it's just being consistent and doing things over time. Because when I was putting together that reel, I was low-key getting emotional going back through all of those photos. And it even caused me to go back way back on my Instagram and see what it was like when I was first posting because it's just absolutely insane to see where I was seven years ago, where I am now, and just where my headspace was seven years ago getting into this. And I had no idea that this would be my life by any means, but I am so thankful. I had hit rock bottom prior that year or what felt like rock bottom when it came to how I felt in my body and how I felt about myself and my habits. I wasn't doing anything that was really benefiting me, and I felt the the culmination of that. And I wanted that change so desperately. And I'm sure many of you guys can relate to this of just trying to start your fitness journey or trying to make a change for anything in your life and feeling like it never really hooks on and it never really clicks. And it might be that you're doing it and feeling really good for a couple weeks and then you kind of fall off. So I wanted to just go ahead and talk through where everything was and go from there. 
The reel in question will also be in the show notes. So if you do not know what I am talking about, you can go ahead and watch that. If you are watching this over on YouTube, then there will likely be pictures coming up as I'm talking. But if you're listening to this, I promise you will not miss out on too much. Watch the reel and you'll be able to really gather from my story that I tell here everything that was going on. So before I get into the first photo, I do need to read you what my first Instagram post says. This was posted in 2016, February 1st. So I say, hey guys, my name's Sue, and I decided to start this not only to help others, but also to document my fitness journey. I've never really liked my body, and after hitting rock bottom earlier this year, I decided to make a change. I emailed a friend from school and asked what to do. I have a background in sports, and I knew how to lift, but always had problems with motivation. The past two months, I've been fixing up my diet and working out and getting my butt kicked. Fitness has already changed my life, and I'm hoping to help others. I'm not a professional, but this is what I love to do and what I'm passionate about. Feel free to email any questions and I'll do my best to answer. But for now, I hope to get to be a part of your fitness journey as you are a part of mine. And just (laughs) crazy because I still ask you guys constantly to email and DM me and nothing has changed since 2016. So I will stay on that. And just coming back to me starting the Instagram, I even say here of, I I don't really know what I'm doing, but I I just want to share what I am learning along the way. And that was really helpful for me to celebrate wins because honestly, at that time, if you have listened to my fitness journey, I didn't have a lot of friends here in this post, I say the past two months. And so that's looking at December and January. And that's what brings us to the first photo in this reel. So it is actually a starting picture for a challenge, which you might be able to tell with the piece of paper taped behind me saying the hashtag 250k challenge. And as I mentioned, I already had my Sue Gaines account at this time. And I'd been posting and had uh, seen some great change. But I knew myself and I knew I needed big bigger accountability than just myself. So this was the bodybuilding.com 250K challenge. Shout out bodybuilding.com, the OG. And there were no workouts provided, coaching, macros, or anything like that. It was just a challenge of, hey, we're going to do this all together for 12 weeks, and then we're going to post our transformation, and someone's going to win a whole heck of a lot of money. And obviously, as a college student, and even now, that sounds wonderful to earn that type of money. And when we look at motivators here, there's going to be different types of motivators. And oftentimes money can be a great motivator, but more often than not, it's you spending money and trying to get the most out of your money versus having the promise of money. I actually remember as I was going through this challenge of freshman in college, no, I was a sophomore at this time, but I think that this was happening during freshman or sophomore year. So my timeline might be a little bit hazy there, but we were learning about motivation. And one of them was talking about uh, quitting smoking. And if someone was promised to win like $50,000, $100,000 for not smoking for a certain time, that was much more often that people failed versus being in a spot that $100,000 or $50,000 was going to be taken from them. So I am someone who does find motivation motivation and money. So not only making and earning money or winning money in this case, but that's actually what will come in here in a second of the way that I got even more accountability was spending my own money. As soon as I see this beginning picture, I am often transported right back to that moment. I was home from college on Christmas break, and this was literally taken, the last day you could take it was, I think, like December 24th or 25th, or maybe it was December 30th, but the challenge started and it was a new year challenge. And I was in a spot where I was like, this is make or break. If I don't commit to something, then I know that it's very easy for me me to slide back because, again, I had done that multiple times before of getting consistent with working out, possibly eating what I thought was better at the time, and then after a week or two or a few days of sliding back to my old habits. 
I had to actually have my mom take these photos because, of course, I had no type of tripod or anywhere to put my phone. And so I had gotten all dressed and I tried to take them by myself. And then I had to ask my mom and be like, hey, can you go ahead and take this picture for me? I need it for a transformation photo. And one small note I want to make here is you'll see my foot, one of my feet, is slightly internally rotated. And when I saw this picture, I remember I used to do that all the time when taking pictures, just turning like one of my feet in so that my thighs wouldn't be pressed together so that I could have the illusion of a thigh gap, which just made me giggle a little bit when looking at this photo because Maybe someone else might not notice it, but like I remember my tendencies and how I felt about my body and how I was hyper aware of just how I did truly not feel comfortable at all in my body and I would do anything to feel a little bit more comfortable. And it feels wild to kind of transport back to that moment because it was a moment that I did feel lost and I was finding more that made me feel happy because when it came to freshman year of college, there was a lot going on. Uh, there was a lot of drinking and I was struggling pretty badly with depression. And some of you guys might recall that I've talked about being in a place where I didn't leave my bed a lot and I ended up binging like TV shows and series like no other. And they were long shows that had like nine, 10 seasons, things like One Tree Hill, Nine 90210. And I I probably watched 10 plus series that year, not only because I was lonely, but because I was just sitting in bed and I would sit and I would eat graham crackers and peanut butter. And sometimes I would realize how much I would eat because I would just be sitting there mindlessly snacking and then be in a spot where I reach in because they're graham sticks and the box was empty. So now getting to the spot that I even wanted to make a change and make a change in the right way, because I also vividly remember freshman year, I was going to a fraternity's formal and I wanted to lose weight because we were going to be on the beach and I did the military diet. And so that is something that's a three-day diet and I would not recommend it by any means. (laughs) Maybe that's something we could break down in a future episode of why it's not the best option, but I would did that to try and lose as much weight as I could going into that formal. And even looking back at my Instagram, the second picture I have is a transformation picture. And it's saying that picture on the left was taken, so it was December 31st, and the pictures on the right were taken a few days ago and this morning. It's been a hard month, but it's been 100% worth it. I've always been a binger with both food and workout. I would be really good for a week or two and then fall off the wagon. Then I decided this time it would be different. I also want to give a quick asterisk there that using the word binge was not the correct use of that word in that time, and I didn't truly understand what that meant, but I did not feel very in control or knowledgeable about food, and I definitely overate, but I do not know looking back if I would classify it as a binge, so that word I don't love that I put in there, but the next paragraph says, I didn't decide to change for a boy for an event like spring break formal. It was for me. And I said, what you working out today? It's leg day for me. Uh, But I think that that was really important because in the past I had always dieted for events. Like I'm going on spring break. I'm going on formal. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And so it was always a means to an end, a crash diet, a restriction of calories to get to a point, and it wasn't actually lifestyle change that could work within my day-to-day life. And so as I mentioned, with being on Instagram and having the Sue Gaines account, I was consistently getting in the gym, which was a huge win at this point. Uh, But I hadn't worked on food as much. I know I mentioned in that first Instagram post that I've been cleaning up my diet. I believe I did have protein powder for the first time, and I was learning about food. But macros really hadn't entered the equation, and that was a huge moment for me. I was fixated a lot on calories, as most of us have been. In fact, I didn't even try using an app of any sort at the time. I literally kept a note on my phone and would just type in what I ate and then add to together the calories and just hopes that it was a lower calorie. And even doing things like having, uh, what were they, like the Special K like breakfast. They were basically like 100 calorie Pop-Tart 
situations. And I remember as I was finding out about macros, I compared those to other snacks. And I was like, oh, these really aren't quote unquote good for me or better for me. It's just that they are marketed as low calorie. So that was a really huge moment for me of understanding that. But I was really looking at what had low calories and trying to just keep calories low. And it's really funny because looking, not even funny, but looking at these transformation pictures from just what that uh, 250K challenge was, and spoiler alert, I did not win and did not win the money. Uh, But I won, you know, life and habits, which is really what matters. (laughs) But looking at the transformation photos, I made great progress. It's really cool. And again, if you're watching, I'll pop that up on the screen. But in 12 weeks, for someone who didn't really know what they were doing, this was really cool to see. And it was really motivating for me to see, to finally recognize I was capable and I could change my body. Because truthfully, until that moment, it felt like my body could not and would not change. It felt like I was just the bigger friend. And, you know, honestly, I mentioned that to Alex the other day because I I forget what we were talking about. And he said something to the degree of like, it really breaks my heart that you view yourself that way because I've seen pictures of you all during like middle school, high school, and I never feel like you're like this bigger friend. And I agree. I was not in a place that someone would look at me and be like, oh, she is overweight, unhealthy. She needs to lose weight. It's just that my friends were very petite. All of my friends were like 5'2 and under, and I was 5'5", 5'6". And with that also came the discussion of scale weight. And so they would be under 100 pounds because truthfully, and I hope that anyone who possibly struggles with the scale weight will take this to heart, each inch that you are taller than someone, that can easily add 10 pounds to your frame. And you might even be the same size as that person an inch shorter than you. And so when it comes to first sizes, the best advice I can give you is to go ahead and buy a tape measure, like a flexible one to have at home because I've been buying some clothes recently because we're about to go on vacation. I cannot wait. And with that, the clothes have been all over the place. If I have clothes literally packed for this trip, ranging from extra small to extra large. And the extra large, yes, some of that is like oversized stuff on purpose, but like I bought a bathing suit in a size large that does fit me and it was just the sizing of the company. And so being able to truly look at the measurements and know your measurements is largely helpful. That was a side tangent, but also looking at the fact that I was comparing what my scale weight was to what my friends were when they were 5'2", and that is a huge difference and especially the frame and especially someone that particular they were wearing a lot of extra small and small, and I felt that I wasn't fitting into that. So while in general, I I wasn't the bigger friend, it really felt that way, especially being around people that were so petite. And it probably didn't help that also the sports that I did growing up is I was doing cheerleading. And so people that were really petite, the uniforms looked great on them and having to wear like the Spanx slash like they were like underwear spandex for cheerleading. They weren't like actual short spandex, which I still to this day don't really understand, but that's neither here nor there, uh, that they cut into me weird. I felt uncomfortable in them. I felt like I had just this pooch and like middle school and high school of feeling that discomfort. And then other sports that I did was track and we were wearing like tank tops and short shorts with big slits on the side, uh, which also makes me come to think about the school's dress code and how none of my uniforms like really fit in with that. Again, neither here nor there. And then the other sport I did was swimming. So I was wearing a one-piece or a two-piece all the time. So that probably didn't help within how I felt about my body and having petite friends and just feeling like I was this big girl, large and in charge. But uh, it was something that when I was looking at my body and desiring this change, I felt like I couldn't have that change when I had tried in middle school, in high school to accomplish something. So that 12-week challenge was an incredible kickstarter to me and to just stay consistent with something. 
And I often wish I knew more about food at this point, because like I described, I would be going for things that were marketed lower calories or just adding up my calories and not really understanding the full culmination of macros. And that's why I'm very passionate about macros and helping people learn and teach them about food and macros, because I think that people have such a one-sided view of what it means to be healthy or fit or to eat, quote, good food. And I want to dismantle that and show people what you can do when it comes to learning about macros and not just about fitting whatever, whatever food in, although that is a pro and a con of it, but it's really being able to look at labels, understand food, and understand what it does for you. I feel like the reason my relationship with food is so positive at this moment is because I have so much knowledge about what food does for me past just what the plain caloric amount is. And I feel empowered by knowing I can fuel and make myself stronger and energize my body with food instead of just thinking it of it as this thing to gain or lose weight. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. As I said, I was in my second year of school. I was consistently getting out of bed at this time, and and I had stopped drinking at this point, or I had either stopped or cut back massively at this point. Because as I mentioned, freshman year, I was drinking a lot. So that brings me to the second clip. And this is a training clip at my school gym. Shout out to the JC and shout out to everyone who knows. If you know, you know about the JC. But the girl that I was going to the gym with at this point, she actually worked the front desk at the gym. And she also had a boyfriend that frequented the gym. And so she was able to, I, I just asked her if I could tag along to her workouts. And just to be able to have someone have that accountability, have that motivation. And and I had actually seen her on Instagram. She had started an Instagram and I thought she looked incredible. And I'm sure I'm not alone. And I used to have these Pinterest inspo boards of all of these physiques that I loved. And I felt like she fit into that. And especially her core of she had beautiful ab muscles. And I always felt like my core was just kind of blah. There was never any definition through there for sure. So the reason I mentioned that she worked there and also had a boyfriend there is that at our gym, it was a little bit of an odd layout. And I, I know that it's common across a lot of gyms of possibly the weight area being more male dominant, but it was even more so in this layout is that you walked in and there was the weight room and then it opened up and there was a second floor, but there was like a circle looking down into the weight room and around that circle were all treadmills. And so it would be that all of the girls were up on the treadmills and they would look down and watch the guys lift. And so it was intimidating to go in there because first it felt like it was all males. And second, you had an audience watching you. And as you guys also know, if you've watched this or listened to this podcast, that perfectionism and people pleasing, and I had a whole host of insecurities that I was still dealing with at that time were pretty difficult. But we did actually start to grab clips of us training, which again was a huge deal, not only because it was male dominated, but because I did have so many insecurities and I didn't feel like I had reached where I wanted to go. But I finally just felt excited about the journey in and of itself. I think that what stopped me the other times was, of course, the fact that it was for a short-term gain of going and dieting for a formal or dieting for a vacation, and I was trying to do a quick fix for something that required a lot more work that I wasn't ready to do at that point. But outside of actually making habit changes, I was trying to figure out how it worked for me and for my schedule. And that's something I still talk about to this day, is it does not matter, and it actually does not work if it doesn't work for you. And I had to figure out how how I enjoyed fitting fitness into my life, how food added to my life and really brought me more than taking away because I looked at it a lot of taking away from my life and I'd finally seen that it could actually add to my life and add to my joy, add to my quality of life. 
So going to that second clip, it was a huge deal that I wore those spandex shorts because for a very long time, I was wearing just leggings to the gym and I would wear t-shirts untucked, like covering me or tank tops that were looser to make sure that nothing was tight around my stomach or my stomach wasn't showing. And I definitely did not wear tight shorts. I might have worn shorts like the Nike shorts, but I was never wearing any tight shorts. So wearing those spandex shorts was a huge deal. And then also recording myself because I remember still having issues with not wanting to record myself and someone think that I thought that I was hot shit and that I was in a place that I knew everything that I was doing. But I did want to document it and just show because I felt so excited about learning about my body and actually enjoying lifting that I just wanted to share it. And as I started to say earlier of another thing that stopped me was focusing too much on what other people were doing and uh, comparing myself to other people, where this felt like the first time I was in my lane of doing what what did make sense for me for focusing on food in a way that made sense for me and just taking that first step because that's the hardest one sometimes. And like I said, I didn't feel good in my body. I didn't feel comfortable in my body. And being in a spot that I was now in a place where I was showing people my body willingly of the change that I was making, that was a huge point. And honestly, the huge reason I made the separate Instagram on top of that is because I had people that were making fun of me and I didn't want to post on my main Instagram and have more people make fun of me. So I created the separate one so that I could post and be excited about things without feeling all of this excess pressure from everyone else because again, I was finally doing it for myself. So as I've mentioned quite a few times, I had no earthly idea what I was doing. And looking at my advice on Instagram back in the day, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what I was doing. I can definitely confirm that. But I would just give little tips like I hit chest and tries today. This is one of my favorite tricep exercises. The first ones don't hurt, but keep going and you'll feel the burn. So I was really not posting complex topics, not posting the way that I do now, but just anything that I had learned. And it's funny because we just did a whole podcast on why women should train chest and February 10th, 2016, chest day. So many girls don't work out their chest because they don't understand that it's one of the biggest muscles you have. It helps lift your boobs, so don't think it makes you flat. Knocked out a killer chest and shoulder day yesterday. And then I said, it's important to mix up the muscle groups <laughs> so you can you can work out together or your muscles will get used to it. It can cause a plateau. <laughs> that part's not true, but definitely women train your chest. So next up, we have a booty picture attempt. And the first thing I think about when I see this photo is how I wish I had discovered no middle seam leggings yet. <laughs> These were actually some of my first Lulu leggings. I had been wearing like Fabletics back before Fabletics was where it is now because now they actually have some pretty high quality stuff. But I was wearing Fabletics, like Target brand, Old Navy, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of those. But they're my first Lulu leggings. And just I they did not fit me correct at all and they were like mid-rise which is not it for me but I had just been told that Lulu were like these amazing leggings so I was like oh these must just be the absolute best and so I wish that I had discovered that there was such thing as no middle seam but I do remember coming into these group fitness rooms and there was also like the cycling room so that I could take pictures without everyone in the gym looking at me because there was never a time that the gym was empty. There was definitely times where it was less busy, but it's a full university gym. Like someone was always there and I wasn't confident enough to take pictures in front of other people. I was fine with someone else recording me while I was training, but there's no way I would have pulled out a tripod at that point to record myself and all people pictures were taken in private for sure. And looking at this lunge video, this was actually in the hallway right as you walk into the gym. So I'm kind of surprised that I'm not only doing lunges here, but that I'm filming it. And I know for a fact, this was definitely something that was like a burnout set. And if you were to see the whole clip of those lunges, they look pretty dang rough. But again, I was just so proud looking back at all of this that I started. Because if I looked and I was like, I need to be doing everything perfect, or even were trying to compare myself to someone that might be, let's say, in 
a similar place that I am now. I would have never felt good enough to do the things I was doing, let alone post the things that I was doing. And I just love that I had finally gotten to a spot, and I hate that it took rock bottom (laughs) of how I described it in this caption to get there, but finally getting to a spot that I felt comfortable and confident enough to do this or just to say hell with everyone else and go towards something that actually mattered to me because I cared far too much about what other people thought to make decisions like this in the past. I would have done something like this in private and would have not posted until I looked the way that I wanted to look. So this is incredible that I was out here doing these things. And that brings us to a flexing photo at the gym. And this one is taken again, hiding in the bathroom um, instead of in front of anyone. And this was one of the first like flexing photos I remember sending to other people. And I probably sheepishly put it on Snapchat and I was feeling fit and jacked, even though I was nowhere where I wanted to be. And I'm just so thankful that I did take so many pictures during this time because I have a habit of, or have had a habit in the past of like not taking a picture when I'm unhappy with how I look. But I'm so glad just to have them for comparison to look back and see where I was instead of being in a place that I felt too embarrassed to even look at where I was that I didn't want to photograph anything. The next three videos and clips here are all still at the JC, the school gym. And I remember doing that clip for the one leg RDL. I believe I had already started my first prep, which I'll talk about here in a moment. And if I hadn't, I was recording this for a YouTube video. And I just, I love that I started YouTube then too, because again, I had no business starting it, posting anything. I didn't know anything, but I was just putting myself out there. And I feel like when I did start this Instagram and when I did start like truly just allowing myself to like something because I wanted to, and it's what made me happy is like, I feel so aligned in even looking at these pictures of this girl that seems like such a young younger version of me than just seven or eight years ago and to see like what she put herself into just it makes me emotional like I said and I don't know what inside me caused me to make that shift or to go ahead and start recording on YouTube and I think a big part of that is environment and the people that you are around and I know that Alex and I have talked a ton about that uh, about you are the people you spend time around or you are your environment and at that time I didn't have a lot of friends I had lost a bunch of them because I had stopped partying and so the people I were was around were the people that were at the gym regularly. And I was following a lot of people on Instagram that were going through preps that were putting stuff out there on Instagram and on YouTube. And since that's what I was consuming, then it felt kind of natural to do of what the next step was because that's the life that I did want to create once I got to that point. So then these next ones skip ahead quite a little bit, especially since the song was getting faster, wanted to move and groove with the times. And it's getting into some videos from my second prep. There's some that are in Ohio, some that are in Indiana, because after I graduated school in Kentucky, I moved back to Ohio, lived with my parents. Alex was still in Indiana, and so we were long distance and driving back and forth. And it was a nice six-hour drive that we got to go see each other. Um basically every other weekend that we would do and pack up everything. Um, But then it pops back to one photo from my first prep and then into like my first building phases and my, or my building seasons in general, and then onto my third prep, which just again was a kind of a whirlwind to see how it all came together. Uh, And then the last pictures that come together here go from training in our first home gym um, for our home in Indiana, then training in our home gym here in Ohio and then clips and pictures all from this past year, uh, so this past 12 months. And so when I think about was it mindset, was it behavior change, I I go back and forth. I needed the mindset change to be able to make the behavior change, but in the same way, I needed to 
make a change to my behavior and my habits to even be able to start to have that mentality change that was going to be a lasting mentality change. So I think that they are both very evident here and very needed in any type of transformation. You really can't have one without the other of actually having behavior change to the person or the type of person you want to become. And that also comes with changing your habits, which often comes down to where your headspace is at and your mentality. So I think that mentality is so important in all of this. And within the question, I believe Maddie had also said something of trying to enjoy her workouts a little bit more. And what advice that I would give to you in this moment is being able to see what you feel like you truly need to make a change on and what your goals are, and then being able to work backwards. And I know that sounds simple. And whenever I say something like this, it can always be pretty simple, but it doesn't mean that it's easy. And so for you, maybe your workouts aren't working for you because they might be too long to fit into your schedule. They might just not be what you want to do or personally prefer to do because people can have different likes and dislikes. And then it can also look at if maybe you are spinning your wheels and not understanding what you're doing within the gym so it feels futile to go ahead and do. And so in that instance, I think it would be really helpful to see what are your goals so then you can even decide what to do because I have clients that might ask questions like, oh, should I do intermittent fasting or should I do HIT or should I do LIST or should I do X or Z or Y? And I often ask them, why? Why do you want to do that? What is your goal? And I think we even had a Q&A recently on the podcast, and someone said uh, something to the degree of, if I'm doing five cycle classes a week, can I still see progress? And Alex said, progress in what? Cycling? Because definitely you're going to see progress in cycling. But if your goal is to see specific change in the gym and to be able to focus on like your strength or your size or your muscles, then something like cycling five times a week might pull away from that. So it's really being able to get honest with yourself about what the actual change you want to make and then being able to take that step and then also seeing how it fits into your schedule and your life because that's how you're actually going to make a lasting behavior change is not only understanding it, but making sure it works for you. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled. And I look forward to speaking with you. And you know how I talked about staying in bed and drinking a ton freshman year of college? My habits and routine were absolutely abysmal. I would drink three to five times a week pretty heavily, go to class or be in bed. The alcohol didn't help how I felt or I functioned as alcohol does have quite an impact on your body, body composition and function. Uh, And I was hitting my wits end of just feeling so uncomfortable and lost in my body. And my digestion was absolutely wrecked at that point, which again, if you know anything about my digestion, eating in that way, and I was definitely regularly eating foods that did not agree with me, uh, plus the drinking and everything else, I, I did not feel good whatsoever. And so that is what I had to get to, to even desire to make the change. It had to get that bad for me. And I saw the girl from my school that was posting on IG and she was in great shape and I needed to know that I could achieve it, that it was possible for me to be able to take that step. I needed that nudge. I came into an environment where I used to be so shy and scared of the gym and ended up meeting a lot of really great guys at that gym who cheered me and her on and pushed us to be strong and celebrated us getting stronger and got excited to see us in the weight room, which definitely added to my experience. So with that, I knew I needed accountability and I had it with the challenge. But like I talked about, sometimes you got to put some of your own moolah on the line to really be motivated to do something. And so I needed to have my money driving me. And so with knowing I needed more accountability, especially if I was finally going to make things stick. And I do want to say before I say this next line that I'm not recommending that if you're having problems sticking to fitness to go ahead and compete. 
That is not a solution, and that is not something that I am recommending. But I am just going to speak for myself at that phase in my life, and I know many people that this turned out very differently for, but for my personal experience, I knew that I needed to have ultimate accountability, and what better accountability than my own money on the line? And I spent every cent I had on a coach and to sign up for a bodybuilding show. And as we've talked about on this podcast, it is very expensive to do a bodybuilding show. It is a lot of money. And then you're also paying for the coach and anything else that might come up. And so I needed that because I'd failed so many times before and I didn't know if I could mentally resist the temptation. I didn't know if I could tell people no because I was a people pleaser. And if someone asked me to go out then I would probably go and push over my personal limits. I had been following girls on Instagram and on YouTube and was inspired by them, but it came down to having the ultimate excuse. Because I spent all my money, I didn't have money to fuck around and drink, and I definitely didn't want to waste my own time and money by doing so because I had already committed to this prep. So anytime someone asked me to do something, I'd be like, oh, nope, I'm in prep, can't do that. And I needed that at that time to be my ultimate excuse. So from there, it snowballed. I learned. I made a lot of mistakes. I learned some more. I fell. I I did it all. And for so long, it felt impossible. I I didn't like cardio. I didn't like healthy food. I didn't like any of the shit I thought I needed to like to make this type of change. I just wanted to look better. It all started at the root of it, of being aesthetic. I wanted to feel good about the way that I looked. And then it turned into truly wanting to feel good in my body and have health that allowed me to do the things that I want to do. And hence how we're all here right now. And going back to my Instagram, here's something from February 14th. So a month and a half into this journey, I said, a month and a half, wow, a few days ago, I was really discouraged. I've been craving so much junk food and gave in multiple times. I know everything has been getting stronger and it's clear when I go to the gym, but I went out a few nights ago and I just felt gross in my outfit and felt like I looked the same as I do as the picture on the left. And that's actually the first picture from the uh, reel. This morning, I woke up and reminded myself this time was different. I compared these photos and realized it is. This is about me and making myself better than I was. And I can't wait to keep working towards that goal. I I had a feeling I was going to cry today for some reason. So, you know, here we are. But... It, it's cool to read that just to see that any time that I was getting discouraged along the way, I still had to constantly remind myself that this was different and it was about taking the next step forward and it was about making that change. So uh, Maddie, I really appreciate your question of asking, hey, was this more behavior change or was this more mindset? And while it's definitely both, it had to be mindset more than anything because I had so many things holding me back, so many voices in my head telling me I shouldn't do something or I looked bad. I didn't know enough to be posting. And it was ridiculous, all of those voices. And I had to quiet them to take the next step forward, to give myself grace, to give myself understanding that I was learning, I was improving, I was growing, to give myself grace for not being perfect and just continue to take that next step because I would not be here if I didn't take that first step and then I had to take every single step after that and even the steps that felt so hard or impossible to take or the moments even after that that I felt so not at home or not comfortable in my body it was continuing to learn continuing to question, continuing to reflect, and just continuing to change how I viewed things to allow myself the life that I wanted to have, because that's really at the root of this. If I'm being the absolute most honest, yes, I like looking a certain way. Yes, I like feeling a certain way, but I also have a certain life that I desire to have. And uh, that leads us actually into next episode, or this one might play after that one. So if this one is after the fact, if you haven't listened to uh, the episode of Alex and I going over our five years of marriage, then go check that out. If this is before that, then wait for next week and this will be coming your way. So thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like I said, I would love you and appreciate it for forever. 
Also, don't forget to share this podcast with a friend who might need this podcast in their life. And feel free to go ahead and DM me, or there's always a form in the description uh, or the show notes that you can submit a topic. I actually thought a really fun video and or podcast would be um, me doing your macros. So let me explain here for a quick second. So what that would look like here is that you would send me a scenario in which you struggle to hit your macros and I would go through it. So I'll give you an example for myself just a few days ago. So last Thursday, uh, we were filming. We were wrapping up the Leaner Together series. Shameless plug, go watch that series. And with that, Alex and Miguel were recording and doing the Inside the Diet. And we had both been struggling with a cough. And so it took a little bit longer. And I was in my office. I was doing check-ins. But it was at a weird spot where I was probably supposed to be recording already. But they were still recording. And I didn't want to make make a meal and then be uh, like in a spot where as soon as I make the meal, they're like, we're ready for you. And then I hold everyone up or I like eat this meal and then I just sit down and film for two hours and I'm not moving around. I didn't want it to affect my digestion or for me to eat a meal immediately finish and like go back up to my office and then them them finish and Alex need a meal. Um, And he's definitely capable of making himself. It's just if I can make it for him, I enjoy to. And I knew where he was coming at that moment of having a hard day and just recording. And so all of these things were going through my mind and I had to make a decision because it had been, it was like 3 or 4 p.m. and I hadn't eaten since breakfast, which is ridiculous of me. It shouldn't come to that, I admit. Uh, But I had to make a decision in that moment. So that's what I want. Or let's say that you're at the end of the night and you always have a weird allotment of macros left over. Whatever the situation is, just send it to me. And if it's way too long to send into like a question box or leave as a comment, then that form can be great because you can type things out and you can be more detailed. You can, I think the form that you can submit it anonymously. If not, I kind of like that it's not anonymous. So I can ask follow-up questions if I have them because I know that, again, looking back at this whole journey, looking back at these pictures, where my headspace was at, a lot of it was that I just didn't know what I didn't know. And I feel very confident in my ability to work through those situations. So Give me what those situations are for you. Either leave them in the comments of this video or, like I said, go to the form that's in the show notes or the description. DM me on Instagram. I'll be responding unless you send something during the 30th to the 6th, then I'm probably not answering. Unless you're just complimenting me being on vacation, then I'm probably not answering. Because if I did not make it clear, I'm going on vacation and I'm so excited. So this this one was definitely a very different episode. Let me know if you liked it. Give me some feedback. I'm all about it. Miguel's probably going to listen to this when he's uploading it to David. He's going to be like, this girl is crazy. And that's okay. I'm just going to tell them all that the podcast went great because I think it did. It's great hanging out with you guys. Have a wonderful day. And you know what? Stick to it. You got this. Finger guns.